Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha's here. Butler is here. And I got to tell you, the fish tank is broken, <laughs> but it's never looked better. Uh, no, no, no. They, they, uh, they came and uh, oh, they, they fixed did. it. Yeah, oh. because the new water was here. That's how I know. Oh, oh here, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. The new water is in the bathroom. I'm like, oh, they're, they've been here. Well, and, here's another mm-hmm. fun tidbit I'll throw out there. Our security cameras are down. So if you were going to clean this place out, now would be the yeah. time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's nothing in here. I mean, there's, like, all of our recording equipment. Yeah, I But guess I don't so. want to do this anyway, so. Well, I'm just saying if, like, uh, it seems like this stuff is. Uh, is it insured? Do we have anything insured? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, Great segue. So, on the line with us right now, we've got Scotty Campbell and Jim Myers um, from uh, Orange County Library System, OCLS.info. Oh, you got it right yeah. this time. And yeah. we're going to talk about the Melrose Center because throughout the pandemic, obviously, um, you know, uh, things have been uh, limited, very limited, and now are opening back up. And there's some uh, new ways of doing things that I, I, I want to talk to these guys about. Like the pandemic has changed a lot of things that maybe for the better. And as far as like how things are done, easier, you know, like virtual sure. stuff has become a lot easier for people. And um, anyway, we'll talk yeah, all Jim, about that. Yeah, Jim, Scotty, thanks for joining us, y'all. How you been? Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, we, we always appreciate your support, of course. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, Jim, tell us about um, what's opening up at the Melrose Center. And yeah, where are we? I don't even know where we're at. Yeah, there. where we're at. Yeah, sure. Currently, the Melrose Center is open for um, people who want to come in and use the sound booths, the editing bays, and the editing workstation computers. And additionally, if you have previously already gained uh, the credential to use the audio, the photo, or the video studio, or the simulators, you can reserve you can reserve sessions for those right now as well. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, God. Now, so. Like, when is this, uh, like, currently open? Um, is it starting next week? Is it started last week? Yeah, uh, sure. Well, it was April 1st when we really opened the door again after being closed for about 13 months. And uh, during that time, and we continue to do this, uh, the instructors are offering uh, virtual versions of all the classes that we teach. I shouldn't say all of them, but most of them. Sure. We're doing, like like, 90 virtual classes a month that we offer online. Uh, but we came back in April uh, just with the computers, the editing bays and the uh, workstations. In July, we, we opened up the sound booths, the studios, and uh, the, the simulators. People can come in and use their own device now for a creative project using our Wi-Fi in the center. Nice. Uh, so that's kind of where we are now. And I think the next step will be bringing back uh, in-person uh, orientations and assessments and equipment classes so that uh, our new members can learn to gain access to these studio spaces. Awesome. Gotcha. And is there a virtual orientation now? Yeah, actually, we're really excited about this. The general orientation for the first time is available online for people to take at their leisure. Um, it's uh, OCLS.info slash Melrose Go for okay. general orientation. Uh, we have um, we have that linked on the website in a number of places. Um, but yeah, it takes, it takes about 20 minutes to go through a series of videos that covers all of the, the procedures that are different about the Melrose Center compared to the rest of the library. Um, and then you can sign our terms of use right there on, the, on, on your uh, device. Oh, that's awesome. And you, you're a member. And then you come in the next day and you can check out a sound booth or something. Oh, wow. I mean, that's very, that's extremely mm. convenient. The, yeah, absolutely. What are you going to do? I feel, I feel I look like you do, you're mad or something. The quality doing? of Jim's audio <laughs> is, is so good. I, no, I told I, Jim you weren't going to rail on that. I oh, can't God. stop myself. <laughs> I don't, Jim, you don't Calm understand. Down. I don't, Jim, you. <laughs> He's freaking out. I told you that Jim. this is a thing that bothers Tom to no end about people in entertainment. And now we have a facility in Orlando that if you were an Orlando celebrity, you could go to the Melrose Center after yeah. signing up using your device and Free. signing the terms of use and then going there and probably have better audio there because well, they know what they're doing. You could at least learn how Jim set up his <laughs> audio for this call today, which sounds so good. His, the uh, chat Jim. Room said, I'm going to quote the chat room, Jim. They said, his voice is buttery. <laughs> yeah. That's that's well, from wow. Jeremy. He says uh, his voice is like butter. 
Jim, um, <laughs> I know we told you this already before we got on air, but uh, there's there are comedians, entertainers that celebrities have been in politicians. It's been months. They influencers. Have, I mean, a year to figure out how to do a good audio quality Zoom call, and they just didn't bother. And I can't. Oh, understand. wait a minute. What and, if we sponsored a class? At the Melrose called Don't Be a Dumb Celebrity. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Take this class that's free and learn how to not screw up podcasts that are just trying to feed their family's audio. Because I'm sure, Jim, your setup you have right now is, I mean, unless I'm wrong, did it cost you millions of dollars? <laughs> did it cost you 10,000 man hours looking around. of uh, <laughs> labor to set you up? Or did you, uh, yeah. you know, you were able to. What are you to, running there, Jim? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking I got about $350, $400 worth of equipment here. I've got a Focusrite interface. That's what we I've have. Got, I've got a Samson uh, mic that's comparable to a Shure 58. Yep. And I've got a little mic stand and an XLR cable. So yeah. it's not that complicated. The and mic I'll he's talking you- into, as yeah. an audio guy, the mic he's talking into, you can find on sale at times for 40 bucks yeah, when yeah. they're doing those crazy blowouts. And that's a damn good mic. It's as good as a, a 58 for sure. Jim. Yeah, yeah. We ta- I'll, I'll just say, I just want to say, you, you mentioned a class. Um, we happen to actually have at Kaboom. 11 o'clock today and tomorrow a podcast clinic online where we go over you go. what clinic. you need to sound good. There so, you yeah. go. There it is. They get, already had it. Get to the clinic. Free! <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't scream. I, because this, Jim, this is what drives me crazy is that we do talk to... Uh, people that have money, Jim. It's not like that's the money is the barrier. It's not the money. Um, and what is crazy is, and the knowledge is out there. And and if you don't like videos, like he said, you could do it through them. Yeah. And the better they sound, the better it would be when they do these interviews promoting to go to their own show, which makes them money. And that's the barrier to me because I can understand if people are like, ah, who cares. Um, I'm just doing this interview for my buddy. I don't care. I don't care if a damn I'm screaming into my laptop. Uh, like, you know, but they're promoting their own show to make them money. And so then I'm like, I can't even comprehend why you don't have better audio or why you haven't figured it out to help yourself. Because the the better the audio, the longer I'm sorry, the interview Jim. would last. I'm sorry, I, Jim. I apologize, Jim. I've been yelling and about Scotty this. In the back. Scotty, time. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's- but uh, it, I understand. Yeah, bad audio is not charming. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is that we have, and I'm sure a lot of people could benefit from this. So if you're listening right now and you would like to take that class, well, hey, uh, head over there. It's super duper easy. Most things can be done online and most things are absolutely free. You know, there are a couple of little things here and there that maybe a, a little a specialty type of thing. Now, when when you guys were making all of these changes, what would you say would be the biggest hurdle as to, you know, reopening what's the what's the hardest part for you guys right now well I mean, obviously it's just feeling like we're keeping things sanitary uh, right and and we we've done that with uh simple things like um you know one session per day in a space you know in in the old days um we would book um two four-hour audio sure. sessions for different people throughout the day so now it's just one session per space per day, and that includes the sound boost, the editing bays. And I think people understand that. They're comfortable with that. Yeah, one uh, of the just... things people don't understand, too, uh, and I apologize for cutting you off, is that, and, and I kind of thought about this with uh, our trainer, Michael, that you and I go to, Tom, is that when you are trying to keep things as sanitary as humanly possible, and of course, we've always done that, and you guys have always done that, but probably not to the degree that we are all as society doing it now. But those type of chemicals, whether it be the most uh, friendly wipe that, you know, isn't going to, you know, harm anything, that that type of wiping down all the time will actually degrade your equipment and degrade your space. And I always I've worried about that when you guys are open, because, like, if you are constantly, you know, it breaks things down. You know, I mean, it's just wear and tear. Yeah. Right. And and, you know, obviously you can't like do something to the microphone specifically. Correct. So, you know, we try to rotate equipment. The video studio, uh, you know, might make one camera available one day and then we just change it out just to feel 
like we're we're letting things sit. Yeah. Um, but you know, you wipe down the the things that can be wiped down, uh, like the, the the control knobs on a on a board rather than the microphone itself. Sure. And one little Lysol spray on a pop filter does wonders uh, sometimes. And I think we had this discussion uh, among the staff the other day, and one person was like, "Well, isn't that going to like over time?" gather some type of residue on the uh, pop filter and the the audio engineer said yeah but it's worth it for what we're trying to accomplish here we can always get a new pop filter soon yeah. but let's just do what we can to to, to and try if to you're help. really cheap like <clears throat> me you take the pop filters that you have off once a month and you rinse them out in the sink you i can do that yeah I, i'm kind of gross i just thought of something um as uh me and daniel are business owners i don't know if you knew this jim uh oh, i thought you were telling me like i don't know possible. if you knew this daniel and I, was like, <laughs> I was unaware i was unaware i do this yeah, yeah, for yeah. i thought i did Fine. this for a salary that you pay <laughs> yeah, yeah i know it seems impossible looking at us and hearing us speak uh but we do own tnd media we do and I thought to myself, like, just like think about the Melrose Center and all the, the stuff and the education you guys provide and like the podcast studio and uh, the the learning involved with wow, that. Just the edit bays where you could just go in and, and grind on a song if you wanted to. As a business owner, I would rather hire someone that was self-motivated enough to go to Orange County Library System and the Melrose Center and learn themselves oh, okay, for so free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, without having uh, $30,000 in student uh, loan debt and whatever, because that the fact that they were motivated enough to, uh, to do the research and learn themselves in these classes you, you guys provide, uh, that tells me that that person is more motivated than even the person that went to a university or a local tech yeah. school to learn the it same thing. It also shows that they're a bit frugal in, the, in using something like that before it, they went out and dumped the cash. Pretty you know? smart to be if the, if, Very the, wise. if the information and the education is free at Orange County Library System with top of the line equipment because I don't, listen, I, oh, I, I, I have no idea what the Jim college is. I forgot to tell Jim we upgraded our computer to what you guys have now. We're fancy oh, now. Nice. Yeah, yeah, we're fancy now. Because I don't know what the colleges or the tech schools have nowadays, but it, at least it's got to be equal or less than what you guys offer because it you is. guys have the best quality uh, in the engineering staff and everything. So anyway, I I would rather hire someone no, I see what you're saying. that learned from you guys just because it shows me that they were motivated enough and smart enough to get it for free at the Melrose Center and go there. And it, it's, yeah. it's just the fact that instead of just go sit in a class and I'm like, ah, well, the guy that went and did it himself. And I have a, a feeling, Jim, I don't know how you feel about this, but I have a feeling we're going to be a, a bit on a renaissance here where you're going to probably see a lot of really creative stuff come out of the Melrose Center because people have been cooped up. You know, you're seeing it around town. You know, Attorney Tuff was just on the cover of uh, what the Weekly for yeah. uh, for her uh, EP that she put her out. Solo that I, EP, her yeah. solo EP, like she's the you know c sort of the you know the I would I would say one of the the major feature players in the pauses, and now she used quarantine time to to write an entire record full of awesome music. Do you do you think that maybe we have reached a point where you you guys are going to see a lot of cool creative stuff because people have just kind of been cooped up? I think so. I, I, I feel like uh, that in the creative world. Um, I'm a musician and, and I, the, the people that I know and play with are all very much feeling that way. Um, it's, it's been a time where whether you like it or not, you've had a chance to kind of uh, reflect and, and be creative. And if you've got something ready um, to say, uh, this was the time to develop it and still is. Um, but yeah, I do think that it's possible that um, that we'll see an uptick. I, and I think we have to get to a point where people feel comfortable coming back, you know, yeah. and I, I think we see that slowly. And then, and I think Scotty can probably attest to that. It's not just the Melrose center, but the whole library and all of the things that we try to do normally, people are, are coming back as they feel comfortable. And, and that's okay because I think, you know, frankly, I think the staff are, are going through that same process, you know, oh, feeling yeah. comfortable again. Um, so, yeah, but I do think we get to that point. I really do. And, and I hope you are right that there's a, a creative renaissance in this town. So 
uh, the Melrose Center could certainly help with that. Oh, yeah. It's your one-stop creative shop, man. Hey, Scotty, um, uh, is the library hiring? I, I'm, I'm now Wait asking. A I'm asking <laughs> everybody. Are you looking for a job? No, no, no. I'm just asking if, uh, because every business, that every client we have, everybody's hiring. Uh, I just wondered if, uh, if that translates as well to the Orange County Library System. I appreciate you asking because absolutely yes, uh, we uh, did the responsible thing during the pandemic and and had a hiring freeze, and uh, so now of course as we're trying to open and get to full hours, uh, we we are hiring. Uh, we have if you go to OCLS.info/jobs, you'll see them listed there. We have part time positions as well as uh, full time positions available. And if there's anybody out there listening who is qualified, we're actually in the middle of a national search for our uh, director. Our, our uh, director, after many years, Marianne Hodel, is it will be retiring, a much deserved oh, retirement wow. um, in January. So if, if there's there are folks listening, uh, you do have to have uh, some qualifications for for that particular job. Hold on, I can be on. co-directors. <laughs> Hold on, maybe what? I want to. Uh, no, maybe apply. you and I split it. Mm. You know, so like I think you would make a great boss. <laughs> like we can be. Co- oh, this is for your boss. Coming as one of his employees, <laughs> not so much. No, we, no, no. We <laughs> wouldn't. Dare ask, you. I wouldn't ask Scotty to take his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy. This is a professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah the professional you, library. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. It's not at the this library. Job. This we company. Only, we only do that here. This company is a facade. And I don't think Scotty's quite as ample as you are. No offense, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, I mean, uh, we, me and Daniel got the uh, UCF degrees. Yeah, Daniel's got the one that Frank Gore has. Yeah, so. I have the I have, a, I have the interdisciplinary yeah. studies degree, which is the get me out of here. And I have a business management degree, so that's uh, pretty yeah, good. That's, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that's and nothing. Uh, you know, I could uh, and Samantha Travis mm-hmm. will tell you that. Uh, Pretty good manager, I feel like. Uh, I'm mean, very hands off. He is. He's very <laughs> hands off. True. Hands he off. Let the employees do whatever <laughs> they want. <laughs> hands off, don't you? <laughs> anyway, uh, Scotty, Jim, thanks so much for uh, coming on our show. We appreciate uh, you know Orange County Library System support, and uh, we encourage everybody to check out the Melrose Center because uh, the facility you have over it's there is ridiculous. Notch, man, yeah, it's, it's, just, awesome. it's just crazy. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And and as always, we we appreciate the support of Tom and Dan and getting the word out anytime. there about all the cool stuff we have. Anytime, yep, no anytime. We'll see you guys very <laughs> very guys. soon. Yeah, see take ya. care, Jim. See you guys. That was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. It makes you mad, doesn't it? It always makes you mad. It, well, the, it, the audio quality is so good. Well, even if Scotty, <laughs> better even, than ours. Even Scotty, <laughs> it is better than ours. even Scotty had the forethought to be like, oh, I'll I'll use this microphone because it's a professional microphone. Yeah. Just give it a, a just give it a beat. It's a give it a it's a give a damn. It's just a it's give a, a damn, dude. He said it's four hundred dollars. It's, it's like as simple as a give but a they're damn. They're the Jay Cutlers in the world. Yeah. Well, yeah. then you got the. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Canadian Josh. I believe is in our Twitch chat room, and we're live oh. on Twitch right now. Twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan Live. I don't know if Josh was mad that Jim's. You know, you I I've seen the Samsung mic on sale for forty bucks. Mm-hmm. And Canadian Josh said it sounds as good as a six hundred dollar mic, and in some ways you can you can finagle it, and yeah. it will. And it, I'm sorry, Josh, if you spent 600 on a mic. Oh, no. You could have just flown here. I mean, it'd be cheaper to fly here and just use the Melrose Center for all your shows and voiceovers. Well, that's how all technology goes, right? It's yeah. like as soon as you buy it, it's antiquated already. Well, even know? this, like we use a really tried and true, a really um, kind of an industry standard microphone in here. We have um, Shure SM7Bs. It's a legendary microphone. But now Shure makes a $99 version, which is basically a newer and updated version of the a cheaper electronics. But supposedly sounds as good. That's both analog and USB and tinier, so you can put it in a suitcase. It's for podcasting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they yeah. basically said, "Oh, we can make a ton of money if we take this mic that's five hundred bucks, four hundred bucks, and then we just say, no, 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 no. We'll make it smaller and cheaper, and then we'll appeal to like influencers and younger people that want to do podcasts." So, just before we go to break, um, because I don't, you are the engineer of this Norm, company. Norm, that's a great idea. He said they should do comedy in that little stage area at. Uh, Something I they, think do they do did. small did shows. Yeah. yeah, they do sm- like shows and like good. um like I I think like open even mic little concerts style. and acoustic mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, you just yeah. can't serve beer. Or I, I think they did like open mic um acoustic sh- like if you were a singer songwriter or whatever like you can go perform yeah. in the, there um, poetry. Yeah, it, Check out the site; they got stuff going on all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. if they open up, you know, it's worth going down there. That's um, cool. So just expo- sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Explain to me and the people that don't understand technology. Um, if you okay, 
you are a comedian that is promoting yourself. Yes. Right? And so you- Okay, that's the role I'm playing? Yes. Okay, I got that. And then so you are calling in every city that you're going to, to, to do a show in and doing the, you know, podcast. It's a junket, yeah. Now it's, well, now it's like mainly you probably go and talk to the most uh, popular podcasts and local radio, yeah, or whatever. It's a, it's a mixed bag now, but my, yeah. I, what I would do is i call into my agent. He'd be on the line. My agent would have already sent me over a list of my schedule. It's probably like three hours hours and i've got ding 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 times when i'm supposed yeah. to call in call in numbers point of contact list of producers and then you're doing through zoom so it's easier than ever you don't have to go to these places these no. hell holes and you can sit, sit in, in their one chair sit yeah. in their cockroach green rooms and uh and then do all that so you're just doing it in your hotel room or before you even fly out you're doing it the day before all the media right yes so you want your audio to sound good yeah so that you're not cutting out and it makes it sound like you're kind of in studio so the audio uh, the people just listening in audio are like getting a nicer experience, right? Or is it that they don't care? They just want their name out there and be like, my fans will come see me if they know I'm in town. Do they not care about the interview? They just care to let people know that they're in town? That's Here's, possible. That's probably yeah, but what it is. Yeah. This is the flaw. It's, like spray, it's almost like spray painting a building, but not caring what the spray paint looks like. Mm -hmm. It's like, I got my message out there. Yeah. Here's the flaw to that uh, reasoning is your listeners already know because you promote it on your social media. Maybe not, though, because sometimes you'd be like, oh, crap, I didn't know that person was here this weekend. That's Maybe you do social you know media I mean? for younger people, and then you yell your name poorly on exactly. radio stations for old that's people. That's what I'm thinking. Regardless, mm. though... It's what I'm that, saying yeah. is the tiny bit of extra effort, for instance, and that's where Daniel's going to explain to me, if you get that $99 Shure mic and then you get the interface. You don't even need an interface. You just plug it right No, in. it's a USB mic. You plug it in your laptop. And the laptop does the- It uh, can, yeah. You just buy it, you, it, you'd plug it in. It would find it. You get it. the software yeah, to, to help uh, yes. your, you know, the levels. In fact, this all. microphone, if I remember correctly, it has a series of dials on it and, and settings where you can change the way it sounds. So the EQ is actually inside the microphone, not in your computer. So you really only need two, thi three things. Wi-Fi, laptop, this mic. Okay, right. That's it. So I assume you don't think stuff like that makes me mad. I assume they have a, I have laptop. a whole bunch of four hundred dollar <laughs> mics laying around here. And then they say they plug that mic into their laptop, and then they have crisp audio when they're doing their interview. And let's say you upgrade your internet so you don't have any cutting out issues, like or we did, or you wire Ethernet or something. You know what I'm saying? So That's it's a the hard best wire. Way to do it. You can do that in a hotel yeah. room. So what we're saying is, it's really just a ninety nine dollar barrier to. Clean, crisp audio Do you want for your interviews to promote yourself. Okay, I'm just, Here, I'm just putting it out there. I'm Here. just putting it out there. You're That's putting it out there to us, <laughs> which doesn't make a difference. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but anytime now, but I'm oh, actually, it's a little more expensive. Sorry, I, I, I misspoke. It was not ninety nine dollars. Okay. I think they did have it originally when they rolled it out. They had a, a, a sale because it was super new. It's two hundred and forty dollars. Okay, still let's whatever. Yeah, but this is the Come mic. It's the it is the Shure MV7 podcast microphone. It's based after the legendary uh, SM7B, like what we have. Yep. You can connect it via, via USB. That's all you need. Um, it has the Shure Plus Emotive app, so you can control it from your freaking phone, Tom, to make it sound the way you want. That's Most you of these comedians get a ticket split for the door too, so. It seems it's advantageous for them to push seats, yeah. And just like the 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 more clear your audio is, the more the longer these podcasts and radio shows will have you on the show because when it's bad audio, the first thing all the hosts do and we do it too is want to get the hell off the call because <laughs> it's it, it's frustrating and we know it's a bad listening experience, right? So you get less time to promote. I don't know. No, I know, I know. Uh, how I know. How? I know. It's it's <laughs> absolutely insane and crazy. You want to take a break? Yes. Let's take a quick one and bye-bye. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. What's on your mind, man? Um, I watched this HBO documentary last night, uh, 100-Foot Wave, um, and I'm not sure how many different parts it has, but I watched part one. Oh, wow. And, um, like a surfing deal, right? Yeah, it's about big wave surfing. And Does it have Laird Hamilton in it? It does have, uh, it's Laird, 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 Laird Hamilton. Yeah. Um, He's a good looking guy, that guy, right? But yeah. Oh yeah. Um, good genes. Him and uh, Gabriella Reese are a couple. He's in it uh, doing interviews, but it's mainly about, and I forgot the gentleman's name. Garrett the name, McNamara. Yeah. McNamara, um, which is a 
popular name for back, uh, you know, I think old days of yeah, surfing. Yeah, right? older, yeah. And um, this guy is kind of like the godfather of big wave surfing. Yeah, this was before my, even my time, yeah, I yeah. believe, yeah. And they talked about, like, the evolution of even how big wave surfing came about. And, it, and it, I thought it had been around way longer, but apparently, like, they had always just, you know, had to paddle out. And they own, they can only get as far as they could get, right? Because you can only paddle out so far with giant waves like that. And they're only able to ride the the sets that were closest. And they yeah, saw you these never, you never mega really waves thought in the back. to have a boat or a helicopter or anything jet ski pull you out, yeah, past where you need to be, yeah. And, and they were talking about how uh, some guys came up with it, um, and they started going out there with the Zodiac. I think it was Laird. Laird may be the first ones that had come up with it. And yeah. Yeah, McNamara they, saw it, and then that he got into it. But Laird and some other group of big wave surfers from back in the day took a Zodiac back there, and then like, oh my God, you could surf the waves that are breaking yeah, in the far it's reefs. Like the, yeah, <clears throat> and uh, and then that's how it kind of started, and then from there. It uh, turned this journey into tr- trying to find like where are the it's biggest. It's magical waves. when you see oh. somebody and you see how. Fa- it's I, nuts. I I don't know. I've never really like looked it up or anything. But I would love to know. Do they cover in this documentary how fast you're going on the face of the wave? Because I've always, yeah, thought I know it's fast. I I. But how? What are you? I'd love to know the speed you're going at because it's very dangerous. Oh, well, very yeah, yeah. fast. A lot of people have died. And, Super technical. And so, and basically, it's this guy's McNamara's journey to, to ride a hundred foot wave, which has kind of been like the uh, the legend or the yeah. like. It can like does that exist? And can you ride it? And right. like where to find it? Anyway, I won't spoil too much, but. Uh, uh, the 96 foot wave. The, <laughs> no, but um, the way these waves are formed is pretty interesting because oh, they go through the science of it. That's cool. Yeah, it's uh, most of these areas like these like Jaws and some other. You know, you've heard these names before. Like I'm yeah. not into surfing, but they're uh, breaks. Yeah, but the breaks are caused by like super deep trenches. Yes, and it's the same system that they actually use at wave up. pools. Kind of. I mean, like the it's just natural formed. And uh, but these like m- mammoth waves um, are caused by these super ocean trenches, and then basically the swell just pushes the wave up. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, all these guys they talk about the same thing, and it's their I'll, I'll use the word addiction, but it's like their religion. Like surfing is so much to them that it's all their lives, right? Like it, they're so passionate about it, and I'm like, man, that's I, like I've never experienced anything where I was that passionate that I've dedicated my entire life to it. Some uh, people are like that with music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like addicted. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's and Is the, it adrenaline junkie. Not adrenaline, really. It's, it's not surfing. It, specific. It's, it's like it's, ocean, but it's also combined with like the a, ocean it's too. Like ocean, mother ocean, the earth. Adrenaline plays into it. Um, the earth, your life, the beach, the sun, the you know, I don't know. So anyway, I don't know any of this, uh, and I kind of I thought about this yesterday, and I don't know any of the background of this guy McNamara or whatever. But um, he talked about like he had kids with his first wife. He was a surfer, and then he basically retired at thirty and opened up like a surf store in Hawaii, and that, and basically, yeah. and that's what kind of guys I guess because surfing doesn't really have. It's you not a money te- maker. Yeah, yeah, it's it, hard to make I money. Mean, yeah. Some guys go on to teach, like uh, the ones that I've seen. You'll go on to, to own a camp, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A surf camp. Um, maybe you'll spectate or not spectate. Maybe you'll be like a, a commentator. Indoor but stuff. It's so yeah. specific, my God. Now Andrea is <laughs> really happy because they've started actually rolling it out on on TV. See, we still have cable, and they've got some of these new like upstart cable channels. will actually cover live surfing. And we'll watch it if it's on. It's kind of fun to watch. And mm. the commentating's good because they get good guys. They get, like, you know, um, names, familiar names you know, like um, uh, Christian Fletcher or, you know, like different guys that you would have known. So, I and I've seen this, and, like, I and again, I don't know anything about this guy's personal life or uh, any of the details, so I could be completely wrong. But 
um, in telling a story, he was talking about like he had uh, a wife and kids. This is like while he was in his late twenties and thirty or early thirties, and doing the store thing. And then he kept being called back by surfing and wanted to keep surfing. And then yeah. big wave surfing was the way. <laughs> All I can think of is the Moana song about the ocean <laughs> yeah, calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what he was saying. Uh, Moana was dead. She was dead the whole time. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I saw that yeah, the yeah. whole meme. Oh I agree that one hundred percent dead the whole time. Um, and uh, and then he's saying that uh, and then he found this uh, new career in the big wave surfing and then and kind of shut down a store and then his and then his life started and his, and after his thirties with this big wave. That's thing. crazy. But so then he's got a new wife uh, down the line. She's way younger, and then now young kids. Like, uh, and he's old. He's older now. Oh wait, so he divorced his other wife, or never yeah, had a wife? No, no, he divorced his other wife, and he, he didn't go into. You that. don't support my big waves. <laughs> but he did have. But I th- hate you. And then he, uh, no, he had a wife and kids. You only support my little waves. So my question to you guys is: It's got to be weird, or. Uh, Man, again, I don't know this guy. Maybe it's not for them. But so imagine your your dad, right? Um, he divorces your mom or whatever, and then go, goes off on another adventure with his new wife, and then has new kids uh, somewhere this else all the time. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even in the the comic book Invincible, this happens. And then his new, and then they're portraying like him and his new kids and stuff is like this awesome. Yeah, family. you don't want them to be <laughs> happier than, than yeah, you yeah, were. Yeah, so I'm like seeing yeah. that as the first set of yeah, kids. You just gotta be rough. That's a stinger. The, yeah, like you're the kid where the dad was just making you stock the re flip flops and put the su- sex wax uh, in the in the case at the stupid surf shop. These kids are big wave surfing and traveling the globe with their dad. And mm-hmm. now and. Now I uh, I'm thinking of a scenario where I actually do know someone that uh, kind of got abandoned and then um, they see the the life of their parent with their like uh, you know their kids Is now it? like later on in life and uh, they're like having this like storybook life and stuff oh, like yeah. Yeah, that's got to be like whoa, whoa what about me yeah, yeah. you abandoned but me maybe, and these other kids but maybe you didn't fit. It was uh, it's just a time period in your life. No, I understand maybe, that. But maybe the other kids fit, or maybe you like the other kids more. Well, you like the situation more. <laughs> that's right. for sure. Yeah, you know. I mean, there's got to be a scenario in in real life, and I know that nobody wants to admit this, but there has to be a scenario in life where you have four kids, and the first one you had, you just don't like that kid. No, that can't exist. I that exists, and that, that can't. Exist. Everything exists. That exists. I think everything in the world exists. Well, yeah, there could be. A there person, is a scenario like that. I yeah, okay. It, yeah, I'm sure it you exists. can't wrap your brain around. I it can't wrap my brain around. Yeah, it. but I'm cannot, sure yeah. that exists. Yes. I just I I just feel like uh, your kid is immediately. I guess, but you gotta, but you gotta bond with your kids to for it to mean uh, have a meaning, you know. Because yeah, if you take right. off early before you yeah, bond, what would it mean? It's just a baby to you. Like it looks like you, right. but there's no really bond there until you bond with a human. Right? But it would hurt my feelings a lot. Like I would definitely not be the guy that the kid, the first kid. If I were the first kid, that'd be that would bode poorly for big wave surfing dad. I I would be a very very vengeful, angry, <laughs> sad young man. I'd right? Wouldn't that hurt your feeling? My God, it would crush me. I'm too sensitive for that. If I saw yeah, that, yeah. like you knew the relationship I actually had with my real father, with my dad. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if I did. Oh my God! I oh my God! That just makes me want to cry well, right now. Seeing him with his other family, oh, happy. It's a, that's the thing. I was it's torturous. Like, <laughs> Even trying to create that in my imagination is making yeah, yeah. me mad. He's and crazy. happier with them. Yeah, stop because it. that's what you it does. Stop it! I do not like this. This happens all. The time. I know. I, know, I don't I know. like this. That's topic. rough. Why'd you come up with this? This is I, horrible. No, no, it, it, he's it, trying it, to bring us down. Yeah. No, just, but he's right. This it, would be. You're right. That is a. That would drive me. That would make that would make me want to kill my father. There's <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. there, there's also a scene um, where his new young wife, like she's a surfer too, but she's not like a, of course she a is. big wave surfer. Nah, no, nah, ladies he, can't do it. He he tows her out there, and then she <laughs> what are you chicken? she wrecks and almost drowns and washes ashore and stuff. And then like he comes and he's like he helping he helping her out. She's like laying on the floor, and then she's like I almost drowned, whatever. Oh, he sounds like a great man. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did mention that his, his obsession is these waves, right? Like. And I think yeah. he loves the ocean more than his kids. I I think there's a lot of people that are insanely driven and obsessed with whatever they're. I 
I don't know anything about Tom Brady, and there's a, a list of other people that are the best of the best, and the best that there's ever been. Sure. That it's like, man, I don't know if you can be that good and that dedicated to what your your passion and have time for anything okay, else, right? The, There's no okay, way. Where you're going is there is a long list of people that are the best at things. And when you boil that list down on paper and then you ask the question, but is he a good person? Right. There's a not a lot of, well, there, there can be, here's but the, there's a lot of like, nope, because he's so focused on that. Nothing else matters. Nothing yeah. else matters. Well, good person is subjective. Like Correct. Like, but good, you know what I mean. He just, but you're so obsessed and driven by this goal that you have that there just isn't time for anything else. So you may love your family and whatever. But then you, know, you neglect them, you, which yeah. makes you a bad person. It's, well, not necessarily. It just means that, uh, and like some of these- I see what you're saying. They don't have the family. Correct, but you didn't think it out. So but maybe the, wife the best is thing fine. you can do is to, is to peace out. If you're, a, if you're not a good dad and not set up for it, but you did get somebody pregnant- in some ways, maybe the best thing you can do is to, if you're going to be a poor influence on this person, then haul ass. Well, no, I mean, say you're just a, you're around when you can be around, but uh, when you're around, you're a good dad, and you know, and and, and honestly, in my scenario, you're not. You don't even want to be there. I you, agree. You know, um, I I think it's possible to be. Are very uh, like limited to family time because you're so busy with business and your passion and this is what you do and it's kind of like what your wife signed up for so it's like she knew going into it this is what it's going to be there are, there are traveling uh, businessmen that have done this for years probably the pandemic has changed a lot of that but uh, there used to be the quintessential I, I grew up with my buddy's dad was literally traveling you know, uh, 200 days out of the year, like every weekend he'd leave on Friday and come back, you know, Tuesday or whatever. And then some, and then you like, uh, every quarter he's gone for two weeks. You know, it's like traveling yeah, business yeah. guy when he was, when he was home, he was good, uh, dad yeah. and stuff, but he was rarely home. You know, I still have a so very, it's like he's trying to provide for his family. That used to be things like that. Does that make you a bad dad? No, no. Uh -huh. He's doing what he can. Like that's a sensitive subject. I, I, yeah. you know, I, I, I have a really good memory of something sort of like it is complicated. That's the correct answer. I think in, in this, but I have a really vivid memory of a buddy of mine, Kevin, I won't say his last name in case he's still local. We played soccer together. And I can remember his dad was an over-the-road trucker and worked really, really mm -hmm. hard. But he was a good trucker. Like, he was one of these guys, like, a li he was a lifer. Like, if he's still alive, he's probably still trucking. Like, he's one of these guys that's just built for it, right? And made a ton of money doing it, too. Like, they didn't, they were not the poor uh, family because their dad worked so hard. And I can remember him wanting his dad to, to be at his game so bad. That's what I'm saying. It no, doesn't no, make no, him a bad no, person, well, hold on. but no, no, like, no, no. that I, will it, negatively affect Well, no, this kid. is a good story. I got a good memory. I'm not done yet. So I can remember wanting his dad at the game so bad. And it was just like a movie I can remember. And his dad had... Rolled up? The, <laughs> yes, dude. He had the quintessential airbrushed Peterbilt. Because nice. he bought his own truck. The, I mean, $100,000, beautiful chromed out, you know, because this was his job. And I can remember him making the corner over by Delan <laughs> Airport. <laughs> yes. <laughs> over by Delan Airport, where Skydive Deland is. It's still around there. The soccer fields used to yeah. be out there. And I remember Kevin's dad making the corner in that truck, man. And he, nah, nah. And we all went crazy. And Kevin's crying. And his dad jumped out of the truck. And he ran to his dad. I, I vividly remember his dad wearing a blue Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> and they ran together and hugged. And, man, I, uh, I think you're kind of proving my point. It's more important for to awesome. be there, you know. Pretty awesome, yeah. though. I'm and glad I, I got to witness that. I love you, Kevin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you like you have to give up something if you want to be the best uh, at whatever you're doing, right? Write that it's, down. Like, okay. it's a, you uh, because there's no way to do, do both. Or, no. You know, no. you can't be like a, a dad that's there all the time. No. and then be the best. It's just impossible. It, but it, I think we. That's wanna, why I'm still here. I love you guys so much, and I'm not willing to leave here and be the best at everything. We want I'll right here with you guys. We want to believe it though, because it's we, an impossibility. We have these idols that were like, man. Uh, well, uh, this guy is the best at this. At but best you don't see the bad aspects of their life, you know. Yeah, to be you glorify the good. Yeah, to be that good at anything, it's just it's got to be a hundred percent of your time all the time, right? Um, and there's no way around it. Um, so this guy, like, because I did see he's like he traveled and he was like he lived at this place, like, he, and they found this huge wave over in Portugal, and that's the whole thing. The documentary about this, like, they didn't know it existed, and then. But where does it end? It would be my next question for you and i'm not saying because i'm not spoiling the documentary or docuseries yeah, yeah but okay you ride the 100 foot wave whatever this guy's name is 
All right, where, what? where are we at now? Yeah. yeah. Who are you neglecting that, now? Or can mm. now you go and be a dad to the first child that uh, worked at the surf No, shop? you're probably still addicted and obsessed with the ocean. And you just want to well, go and spin in the ocean. 105-foot wave, 110-foot. Like, yeah, does yeah. it ever Never stop? ends, yeah. He, I yeah. think he's old, He's too old now. Um, he just couldn't physically do it like he did, I, you know, although it wasn't that long ago. But even 10 years, as you mm. know, like uh, the difference between your uh, early 40s and then your early 50s is a big physical uh you know, you just maybe can't do right. right. So if you crash, you're dead because you're you're not gonna oh, be able yeah. to hold your breath. And That's, uh, it's dangerous, man. Big wave surfing is no joke. From our Twitch chat room, Twitch TV slash Tom and Dan Live. If you would like to watch live daily. Christine says, that's a love language thing, too. Some parents show their love through killing themselves professionally to provide financial stability. That's true. It, it is, but then you learn that your kids don't care. Yeah. And, they, and you're all killing they, yourself, all too. They, all they want is to spend time with you. But, um... But that's what they say in the movies, right? The, the the cliche in the movies is the kids like, I don't want all this stuff. I just want to be with you. Like that kind of, yeah. right? Isn't that they what They say we... that, but I think my sons would be like, I want my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm I want the new Switch like, with like, the new Ethernet port I, built in, you POS. If I, you had to go away on a business trip for a couple weeks, you don't think your kids out, would miss dude. you? They yeah. would freak out. They're your little you. They would, but if I gave, if I said like Maisie wouldn't give a damn. She doesn't know where <laughs> when I come and go. I have to punch in and punch out. She's my boss. I I could give. I would be funny to uh, record if I gave my kids the option of like, listen, I, Daddy can just stop working. Mm, be careful what you record. And uh, we just have to sell everything we own. We have to downsize uh, significantly. And uh, you know we wouldn't have any nice things. But I'll just be here all the time to play with you. You know, just I like, bet they'd like that. I was going to say, I think they might take you up Maisie, on it. Maisie they, would take me up on that. They if I would said, yeah. up three weeks. Of the, they were like, where's my pool? Where's my <laughs> Nintendo Switch? Like, I, it's not oh, that good. Yeah. Spoiled and run. We I, live in Daniel's old studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it like, sneaks in here. Yeah, yeah. You all sleep in one bed like it's, the Willy Wonka grandma. Yeah, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you ask, uh, you know, I wonder if there was, if any kid grew up where, they their dad was around all the time, but they're at extreme poverty. And then they were. I'll just, go ahead and raise my hand now. <laughs> and then uh, and he was abusive d head. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't I, want him around. No, but it was saying not not that that he was like a nice guy and mm. a good dad. But you're poor all the time. And then the kid was like, Oh, I'm sure. I'd rather be rich if you go work. You know, but it, because I think. Just like me and Daniel has always found, <laughs> it's always you, the the grass is greener. Yeah. They, you always is. want what it you is. don't have. Daniel talks about Maisie being uh, an incredible athlete and being like motive, just running. I, I wanted nonstop. to play guitar with me, and that's a big fat no. I want her to play oh. Mario Golf with me. That's a big fat no. Oh, no, she, she won't play that? All she wants to do is handstands, flips, yeah. back bends, and needles, all these little dance moves. Dude, Tom, Start taking dance classes with her hip-hop I don't want to dance. dance. Dude, Tommy, <laughs> I'm old. Tommy is, some flexibility. is sitting on my couch strumming his whole yes, acoustic guitar. It is. I love that he told me like, you can play guitar. Bring him to my house. <laughs> I like, will teach oh, yeah. this boy guitar. Let's just swap kids. I've Go been outside. Uh, play in no. the jungle gym, nerd. And he won't do it. But hey, if he wants and to then sit, then Max wants to play video games yeah, all day. Yeah, that's what I want: video games yeah. and guitar. So it's, but I it, want flips, hands, hands. I know. You I want to try to have uh, my sons teach you me how to do like, it. Hands. Do you hand. like ultimate competitiveness? Where if she loses Uno, yeah. she uh, calls me a, a bad word. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Old, yeah, yeah. That's a, <laughs> but I think that's only because it's exactly. different. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So we're just like we're just gonna be, uh, you know, uh, constantly wanting. What we can have, that's it. Uh, yeah, figure it out. I, I've though. always wanted what I can have. <laughs> like right now, I don't want a family. See, that makes me think. Want to be single when we're young. If you're put in a position where you can have everything, like a Powerball or ultimate money situation, that's why I think it it ruins you because uh, it's like, well, you can't have anything. I, mean, I guess then you want love well, or you want yeah. some sort of like family style thing you can't buy right yeah well yeah. i have love right now right and I, yeah. I have a family that loves me and that's fantastic mm. my dreams are like material things right yeah, yeah so if you give me the powerball i could snap my fingers and all those material things are mine then then actually you start really analyzing over analyzing the love that's in your life and you realize it may not be where you want it to be yeah, and yeah. then it's the thing you don't have so then you lust for that but your concept of it is already poor so it becomes like sort of mutated does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we are tortured humans. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Is Butler here? Yeah, yeah. 
Why? I don't know. When it gets really quiet, I think he's in there like loading the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there's uh, something like, uh, what's he doing in there? Is he connecting the wires? Has he got the timer on there? Let's play some uh, voicemail. We got to take a break. What oh, we, oh, we, oh, I mean, God. we do. We're right on the break. All right. Oh, yeah. Break time. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Dan. I'm Tom. Samantha's here. Butler's here. And uh, we have a special guest on the line. Yep. So uh, this gentleman emailed me the other day oh. uh, for some business. And he, uh, business, in, risky business. And the email, he was like, uh, you know, I play uh, Twitch video games. I have a Twitch channel. He does. Um, I was wondering if I was it, watching it yesterday, I believe. Yeah, if it could be possible that maybe because through Twitch, you can um, basically broadcast other people's Twitch channels Indeed. and during your breaks or whatever. It's like a share. What is it called? Uh, you know, you're hosted, hosting yeah, someone you're, else. You're just like you, you're piggybacking a, uh, on somebody else's channel. And uh, this particular gentleman, I guess, he's asking you for that. Yeah, yeah. So Mike B was like, uh, I would like to be uh, hosted on your channel. Th- right. You know, mm-hmm. and therefore I can uh, get my Twitch uh, channel more popularity. Sounds that, great. Yeah, yeah. So on the line What's with us. What's in it for us? Oh, well, that's yeah. what I'm gonna ask. <laughs> from the Ono oh Radio Show yeah. and from Ono oh Media, who supplied us with some really amazing videos for our Twitch um, stream is our good friend, Michael B. Hello, Mike B. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Good, Mike. So um, here's what I wanted to talk to you on the air about, because I I said, uh, all right, well, let's talk about this, but on the show... Because that's the only place I could be honest, um, and because it's a so I know how this is going to go. Disability? <laughs> no, no. He, he's this go- is the only place you can bilk people where they feel too embarrassed to say no to you. Well, how he, dare he's you? He's become everything he hates. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. only has, That's what I wanted. He only has <laughs> six to seven threads left on his sleeves before they fully off, yeah. molt off. You know, um, you hate what you love, though. Uh, what? what? I've never heard. <laughs> I've never heard the phrase "you hate what you love." I'm writing that down. For write that down. Idea. <laughs> write that down. You hate what you. Lo- I don't. That was hard to figure out. <laughs> I would yell the F word. That's hard. That would hurt. <laughs> that one requires its own line of uh, like existential thinking. Yeah, that's like one of the, that's like one of those drawings of a Dutch hound where you don't know where his <laughs> butt begins or his head. It's you like know? something was lost in translation <laughs> yeah. there. My God. So Mike Love what you hate. I uh No, you hate what you love. I, <laughs> I hate what you love. I I'm down to host you on our channel, but what are you bringing to the table? I'm all about I, okay. I need everybody to bring something to the we table. We need mutual. Wait, you were looking at me when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. No, no, no. no. Dan, what are you bringing, Dan? He brought it. I'm, I'm so tired. Um, Dan already brings a little, like, step-up seat to the table, just so we can sit at it. You know what? Uh, insulting yeah, Dan yeah. don't want to help <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, because, I'm not even listening. Because I can't even <laughs> physically uh, do and host you. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, so, so it would be Dan so doing it. I don't yeah. know how to do it. Juan doesn't. And, and he's he quit. Still, he's still at the front yard. <laughs> festival <laughs> trying to find the laptop in fact you could have just asked daniel he could have pushed a button <laughs> but because you asked me uh, we're doing this whole rigmarole oh, wait, if he asked you then i can leave <laughs> um i would oh, know you guys know that i want to be on the air just as much to talk about this as you need it <laughs> so mike um we don't need it <laughs> i have i have watched Damn, a, a lot i thought we were throwing in something <laughs> i've watched I a, play. a you lot can, you're allowed of these video gamers play video games on YouTube. You kind of have to watch it now because your boys are Because my it. boys love it more and, than anything. And I love the fact that your boys love it, yeah. and I love the fact that you hate it. Wait a minute. You hate what you <laughs> love. Yeah. I get it, man. I get it. You worked it out. I, I told it. you. I got it. Write that down for the awards. So, I don't know what it means. But. Um, so, so obviously, like, the first thing I would do is I'd want to play video games with you guys. You know, I know you guys got the PS4 there. I'm playing Red Dead Redemption right I think now. Butler took that home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're Butler, asking. Hold on, Mike. Work. Bring it back. Uh, pull it back, because you're, now you're asking us to get involved. This was about pushing a button before, and now yeah. we're gonna have a conversation about that. But now you're yeah, asking me to get yeah. involved, and I gotta sit Our there. Time. Anyway, We're coughing all over us. Um. So, so Mike, I don't need- fouch you, my Florida. <laughs> oh, no. What are like? Explain to me your Twitch. Uh, platform. Explain to me 
uh, what you do, and also... He does a character. Yesterday he was doing a character called Johnny Moonbag. <laughs> okay, all right. That's something. Yeah. Um, I know there's like a, a guy, Dr. Disrespect, and there's these things, these characters that... Little uh, cheese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I do funny internet videos. Um, Wait a you minute, know, you do sketch I videos? A little bit. Do you dress yeah, up on. like your grandma on TikTok? <laughs> hold on, we gotta watch one of these sketch videos. Where are they at? Where, where can I find the Mike B sketch? I mean, I do stuff. I mean, I'm creating content on TikTok. Uh, I do the Johnny Moonbags thing. Are you? He stole our bit for his TikTok dump them out are, segment. Are you? <laughs> are you in one of those uh, like improv troops where they have a zany name? Like we're called Exploding Burritos. <laughs> I hate those. No, I, um, I'm against improv comedy. Let's bring up uh, Mike B's TikTok and see some of his sketches um, so we can play what, them. What's your TikTok? We'll give you a free plug. ONRS underscore Mike B. All right. Um, so back to the Twitch. And I got a video about taco neck syndrome. Taco neck syndrome is still a very serious thing, and nobody talks about it. Taco neck syndrome. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tom hates it, which means he might love it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the confusing part. Yeah. Um, you so, never know. So while Daniel finds uh, some of these. Okay. I forgot that TikTok just I mean, goes whenever yes, it wants to go. I hate you, TikTok. <laughs> Um, you know, obviously, most of it's just going to be video game content. You know, me playing games that I enjoy playing. Uh, that's oh, what a lot of it is. he was saying his Twitch. I said, what's your TikTok? And his Twitch it's is... Same. Oh, it's, it's the, the same. same. I can't find you on uh, the old yeah. TikTok. Oh, shit. No. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> you know why it might be? I'm not going to have you call in again. Oh, so, Mike, man. here's what I wanted to talk to well, you about. Um, the... When you're playing video games on Twitch, which is primarily where we're going to be hosting you, and, and that's going to be your ent entertainment that's going to be hosted on our channel, so i got to make sure it's good. Now, I've yeah. watched these other gamers that my sons watch, and there's Preston, there's some uh, there's some guy called Block Party Johnny or something. <laughs> Block, wait, Block Party <laughs> or something, Johnny. Something like that. Anyway, they're talking the whole time. Um, and, and I'm trying to appreciate their, uh, entertainment and their talent, right? Because I get, I could be the old man that's be like, this is a nothing, but that's a dumb old man. That's what dumb old men said to, uh, about podcasting, uh, 15 yeah, years we, ago. We've heard that before. And so I don't want to be that dumb old man and just, uh, look at these kids that are doing it. And by the way, this guy's like, uh, the Preston guy that my sons watch all the time now, um, worth, uh, you know, $20 million or whatever. I'm watching him do it, and he's nonstop talking, and there's a certain amount of improv that he's doing to just keep the conversation going. Sure, and and yeah. now he's describing what he's doing, so there's a little bit of, you know, that's it makes it easier because you're just talking and telling everybody what you're doing in the video game. But to just talk and that free flow and make that entertaining and be excited, that's something, right? Like, that's a talent that this kid has. Um, now, yeah. and, and my sons are just, uh, mesmerized by it. They're just sat, they sit there and watch is episode it him after episode. Or is it the game? It's him. Well, um, you, you do know that I'm on a podcast as well. And I just talk. Well, right? I, I want to hear, uh, I a have, little audition. I, I have his TikTok up if you want to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what, let's all see right, what. So here's the last one. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Here we. Oh, oh yeah, I saw Lines this. Off. I saw this on TikTok, and uh, I was How afraid to click on. Oh, you saw me on TikTok? Yeah, yeah but I scrolled right <laughs> past it because I got embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what he's gonna say, and. Uh, oh damn it, Tom! Oh, I can't play that. <laughs> one. Well, uh, showing off his All oil right. burn. All right, here's Mike B. He's on a mic. What's he gonna do? He's just looking. That's at the him at the ONRS studio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got a shout out that we're on live. All right. Oh, that's good. This is good. This is good content. Hi, folks. It's Monday again. Oh, that's my dump them out segment that I started doing on on TikTok too. It's dump them out Mondays. Wait a minute. We do dump them out Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you stealing our bets? We're gonna have to sue you now. It's an emotional dump out, Daniel. Oh, that's right. You told me about this. Okay. Um. So, Mike, are you able to talk while you play the game the entire time, like Preston does? Oh, yeah. I mean, between describing what I'm doing and, like, making funny little commentary about, like, the guy I just threw a hatchet at and his horse ran off with him still hooked in the in the little saddle thing. 
and talking with the people in chat. I mean, yeah, you, I pretty much talk for, you know, an hour or two. Now, are you this able... This is our future's <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> Yeah, that, I know. Yeah, I heard. That's not scary to Listen, anybody. You, like Tommy and Max, you did it to yourself. We're watching Mike B throw a hatchet, <laughs> throw a hatchet at a, on a video game. Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd kill myself. So, um, as you're talking and describing what's going on, you're throwing in little funny uh, jokes. And uh, observations, yeah, little uh, you know, nuances here yeah, and there. I'm quipping, um, throwing little digs at people. You know, are you able? When you totally blow some guy away in Call of Duty, you know, it's like, ooh, suck that nerd. Are we getting mm -hmm. a cut at all of? And, uh, hard to take a cut of uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so, I still want to though, just so I have a little piece of nothing. So <laughs> here's a skill that I've noticed that these people have is they're able to read the chat room and simultaneously continue to talk and interact while they play, and that's a skill that I can't even understand. Like I yeah. never developed that over the thing that's my career, and I don't know how anybody does that. I think the thing that's most impressive to me is that, that these top tier guys have like the green screen the graphics they got little things popping in here popping out of that they've got little auto cues for when people donate they've got branding and then their merch page is below and it's like really well done concise a lot of those top guys also have like two other people there who are running the production side yeah, they're like not they, doing, unless some of those guys have teams with them yeah they have a team like we don't even have a team here Dude, I just remember yeah. what I wanted to talk to Juan about yesterday. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> nice job, Mike B. We're going to hang up now. You help no, out. Juan, oh. Juan can be on this. Oh, real quick. Yeah. Can, can I, uh, the one, the thing I actually did call about earlier was uh, you guys were talking about your dads and stuff. Hmm. Um, and, like, my dad was around and he worked really hard. But there would be times on, like, the weekends where the house was clean, like, everything was done. And me and my brother and sister would be like, all right, we're going to go hang out. And he would just be like, no, you don't need to go outside right now. And it never made sense. And like, it That's just, a control thing. There, there was no issue. There was, I don't know what it was. Um, but in retrospect, you know, I kind of wish I would have stayed in because now he's dead and I miss him all the time. Wow. Oh, Why'd wow. you bring us down? Don't also, out Monday. Huh? Oh <laughs> it's God. weird for him to Wait be like, no, no don't go outside. It's, it's Thursday. <laughs> do, you know, do you know how much I have to yell at my sons <laughs> to go outside? And they're like, it's hot out there. I'm like, yeah. go, let's go. If my no, dad, dude, we were dying to go outside. And he was just like, mm, no, well, it's not outside. Well, now my dad's <laughs> dying to be outside because he is outside. He's in the ground. <laughs> That's weird. All the time. All the time. <laughs> was kidding. it a paranoia thing? Maybe he didn't want you to get like kidnapped or yeah. something? Like, uh, I could see that. I, I never figured it out. Like he, ne he would never explain why. He'd just be like, "Because I don't think you need to go outside right but now." But I'm not going to kidnap a 12 year old with an ugly mustache and a nose ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I was a, I was an, a, I was an annoying kid because like, they put the me in gifted, and they're like, "You're too smart." So I just made everyone's life a living hell. That's the weirdest. Oh, yeah, he was a genius. Awesome huh? of <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, genius, advanced human being. Um, <laughs> Mike, oh. Oh, Mike, <laughs> Mike B. So uh, <laughs> you really rattled Tom slot machine eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> you may know about uh, this person. So uh, I was watching like uh, um, the some commercial for America's Got Talent. They came on, and uh, I was like, a, we're watching Hulu Live. It's Terry so Crews now, right? Because Nick Cannon's on Mass I, Singer when he wears the uh, Jombie the Genie Turban. But I saw the guy that was in here. I forgot his name, uh, but he was at the video game convention. They, I, I played... Um, oh, uh, Keith... Uh, Pacathy, our, he's written on the side of our. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, it's close. Uh, Keith. Where you sat in that Apica ice tub and played video games? Apicary, Apicary, Ap Apicary, Apicary, Keith Apicary. Yeah. Anyway, he does that doctor disrespect. Uh, or is that that doctor? No, no, it's, that it's nerd. Not the, it's not the same guy. Okay, but the nerd one. It was him, and and he was doing his nerd. Like he's got the bozo, and that's, that's his Keith Apicary. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. okay, that's. 
So So he was doing that character on America's Got Talent. Oh, he was. And then it, they were pretending as if that was a real person. See what I'm saying? Like it uh, wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't a bit. Yeah, so yeah. was he gonna play video games as his talent? Or? No, he he was just up there being annoying and being like a, a, the nerdy uh, like uh, character that doesn't care what people think. It'd be like Napoleon Dynamite. You know what I'm saying? Oh all God! Like, why was he doing that? It, that was his bit they're, for America's Got Talent. They're now, for whatever reason. Booking people on that show that are already that already have an audience. Well, they're running out of n- like the Sklar brothers were on it not that long ago too, and it's like, what yeah. is this? So well, that's weird. That yeah. guy's already got some popularity. What was weird though is that they were treating him. Well, it's fake. It's all fake. Tom. I know, I know, but I'm yeah. just. But, the, but then it was like they, I they're knew completely it was fake because nobody would wear a Jambi the Genie <laughs> turban. <laughs> I, I thought the whole point is like, let's find out who's got it. No. And they weren't even mentioning like, okay, his talent is acting because that's what he's doing. Well, his talent but, is video games. Yeah, yeah, but the, but acting like this character, right? That's, yeah, but there's that, plenty of people that would be better at acting like that character than that guy is my point. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. a trained character actor. He's a guy that fell into a character because he happened to be good at video games yeah. and created a persona, right? Yes. And no they, offense, I'm just saying that's what it is. And the judges of America got, uh, America's Got Talent were treating it like that this guy was a legitimate person, like the this character was a real person, and he was well, trying to do Well, then it becomes like so. you're laughing at a slow person. Sort be, of. Owen doesn't of. bust <laughs> my bit when I do moon bags. Like, he lets it run. Like, that's the point of the bit. I know, but it's, it was weird that it was on America's Got Talent, right? Yeah, that's like, weird. Because that's uh, odd. Well, they're yeah, giving up dumb. on real people. Now they're just yeah. hiring people to come And also, you know when you're getting that guy that he'll he'll tweet it or talk about it to his audience yeah. and pull in oh, new people. People watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. I mean, they're doing what back when uh, we were on uh as dreamers do movie where they hired the main actor who was already a social media influencer to try to get it on his audience to yes. watch it and i forgot that it's the same yeah. thing as all the, the new reality shows they're all hiring instagram models and yeah. like uh coming up actors and comedians it's, it's free all promotion fake. yeah yeah, yeah. That'd be, why nothing's not? real anymore yeah. yeah why not get the free promotion from your contestants that already have a bigger audience in your show yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying like uh anyway so my, um, so, was there a question here? I just am wow, not. Wow, man, you gonna take that? Convinced that your Twitch uh, game is on the same level as these millionaires, uh, and you know, I guess I could watch it. So you're but, asking. Uh, that's so, a step too far. So again, me. you're asking. I guess I could watch it, but mm. I'm not. So you're asking, like, what? Wh- how does this assist our channel? Right, like how well, right. I just want to make sure he's got the goods. Like, uh, you know, you're just you're. You don't I, want to be associated with someone that doesn't have the goods. Well, they, then they are our our Twitch viewers. Like, we go, uh, we're done for the day, and then all of a sudden you pop up in there, and then they're like, they start watching this guy, and then it's like, oh, well, this is why they Tom I mean, and Dan associate just with just this ask guy. Twitch. Ask Twitch if they uh, enjoy watching me play games. Some yeah, of them but, watch. Yeah, but we'd be asking our own Twitch, and of course they're going <laughs> to tell us. Yes, we do because we. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'd have to ask an independent group of Twitch people, yeah. like a control does, group. Yeah, do, yeah. Does this man have the goods? Yeah, yeah. Like um, we're going to have to do a study on this. I I just don't know. And you like you guys. You have, I'm it. okay with it because I don't care. You're the only one. That, <laughs> you're the only one. That well, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, like, honestly, I'm just like at the end of the day when I leave here, I'm trying to get better at not caring. And if Mike B's on there drunk and he's like stumbling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are video. you gonna get drunk? Like I need yeah, some whack pack. Yeah, uh, we need some hijinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I I drunk stream every now and then. It's kind of fun. But I don't need every now and yeah, then. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, we need, like, I need you to seriously, I need you to yeah. go Farley level party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. You know. You want me to die? No, but no. I want you to get close. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, remember they had that guy, uh, Howard Stern, and it was like. Jeff uh, the Drunk. Jeff the Drunk, yeah. right? That's it. <laughs> I'm not saying you're that guy, but in the, well, in the Spider-Verse, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're the Spider-Man pig of Spider-Man. I mean, you could huh? replace the name Jeff <laughs> with the name Mike, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That guy, every time he was on Stern, oh, like uh, fantastic. He he knew his role. Yeah, he like, hit it out of the park. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I let him eat cake scenario. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I know what these people want. They went to him. So, he's so you want me to be might be the R word all the time. 
No, 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 no. Well, no, 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 no. that's very disrespectful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can't. You know, I'm after hang up. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, you hate what you love. Um, <laughs> so, all right, Mike, I'm still gonna think on this we'll for think another, on another couple days. Um, and I had some other people reach out to me that wanted to host us on, uh, or wanted us to host them on Twitch or whatever. Wait a minute, are we a hosting company now? I need bigger co- shows to host us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 that's what I need. Well, I don't need to be. I don't need to be reaching a hand, a hand down to pull people up. I need people pulling my ass up. Here's the thing. Like, it's like when we asked like the Trivium guy, "Where the mic be of that situation?" Oh, you're not gonna <laughs> ask. Are Matt we already Hayfian. hosting him? Yeah, we are yeah. hosting Matt Hafey. Yeah, yeah, but he's not going to host us because he might. we're... I don't know. We're well. He he, he was friends with Lee. I think he also <laughs> does a lot of stuff that's a little more family friendly. Yeah. You know, yeah like, he I doesn't curse or anything. I don't think, believe he does. He's a good person oh, and like, oh. very talented genius. Like, what about... My, can you do some family friendly content at the yeah. hours we could then push to kids? Can you slur through some uh, children's <laughs> books? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I got... Uh, I'm working on a little puppet show thing. Yeah. Um, Good night, Moon. For kids. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, chair. Good night, lamp. Where I, you, you know, know where I like give kids lessons, but I'm drunk when I get them. I hate that book, and let me tell you why. <laughs> because one of the pages is blank, and I was like, "This is a cop out." Like uh, they literally have. What book is this? Good night, Moon. Good night, Moon. Oh, I've never um, read it. And uh, then it's like, good night, no one, or something. It's like, then it's a blank uh, page, and I'm like, you guys are skimping me out of my book money. You just wow. literally have a blank page in the middle of your story. Anyway, sorry, Mike. All right, Mike. Um, I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay, I appreciate it. All right. All right, buddy. Yeah. Head up. Yeah. Love you guys. Head Have up, a good one. Head up. I know he's tough during these type of interviews, but head up. It went better than you think. Mm-hmm. Wonder why did Mike B's dad say don't go outside? Not it's a, good a controlling thing. Know, it's a controlling thing. And, and then you said that, and then Mike B's like, I wish I'd stayed in because he's dead. And like, my God, y'all. Was it to teach a lesson? Maybe this happened with uh, uh Maybe he didn't want anybody to steal his nose ring. He's like, that's an expensive ass nose ring, boy. I'm a I'm a horrible parent as far as okay. discipline goes. Okay. Um, <laughs> all I do is want to give my sons everything they want and make you their let, lives. Did the, you the, let Max play with your emptied revolver again? No, no, no. But I would. I'd make sure there's if no there's bullets. There's no bullets in it. I mean, then it's just a piece of metal. It's right, a exactly. it's, it's, no, no guns arm. don't kill people, Tom. <laughs> people kill people. So, uh, 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 it, Max did a couple things. One, and tell me how bad of a parenting move this is, or if uh, I'm like, do you want me to be honest? Yes. Okay. So right. we he got a fifty dollar gift card for his birthday. Damn. Damn. Oh, and, good. And God in heaven. That's a great gift. How old did gift. he turn six? No, I think that's that's regular nowadays. We're doing the old man thing. Where we're like fifty dollars back. Uh, Thirty. No, I mean, forty years ago, I got a two quarters. Here's the way I look at it. If I'm buying the gift, it can go above fifty. But if I'm giving you money, it's closer to twenty five. Yeah. Does that make sense for your daughter? Yeah. Twenty-five dollars? No, no, no. I'm saying I'll buy her an exp- If you okay. want a doll that's a hundred dollars, I'll buy it. But mm. if I'm giving you a gift card, it's usually like twenty-five bucks. I'm not giving you a gift card for a hundred dollars. Mm. I have fifty dollars. You're six dollars. You have no concept of money. Um. Uh. So anyway, uh, we give him a gift card, and the whole point was we're gonna go to Target. By the way, that's the only I guess place. Um, that Walmart now that you can just go buy that has a toy section. You know, they, you know, yeah. there's no, no toy stores really. Big lots. In. Oh, big lots, I guess. Well, uh, if you want expired uh, toys. <laughs> no. I said $50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you can get a lot at big lots for 50 bucks. Yeah, but it's all like the action figures that aren't real. That's all it involves me stuff. walking around big lots. I like big I, lots. Take an edible though. before you. It's, it's kind of fun. Go it's it's like there. Walmart. I uh, I said one. I had to walk around big lots in Walmart. Walmart's toy I said, section. I hope I can get out of here one day. <laughs> Walmart's toy section though is really fun because it's humongous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's um, the one. You should have gone to Walmart, but Target's good. So anyway, uh, but before we went there, um, we went out to dinner and then. Uh, they like a uh, barbecue restaurant locally. Yes. Um, and then uh, I like it because for whatever reason, they just always request this r- r- restaurant and it drives Crystal crazy because all she can eat there are sides. You know, what do they all- eat? 
sides too. They, oh, yeah. Yeah. they get a sides. grilled cheese sandwich. They like the lemonade. That's the only oh, is that reason. What it is? Yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, you like what you like. The two screams, little old men. There's, lim- <laughs> yeah, there's lemonade everywhere. It just doesn't matter. They always pick it. Anyway, we're there. Your at, kids are so weird. They man. are weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I screw with them. Yeah. You're, you're a weirdo. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, um, and uh, don't do they know. They know. <laughs> they <laughs> know. Stop. The uh, so they have, and then Tommy takes uh, ten dollars out of his piggy bank. Uh, because he I was going to say yeah. out of out of Max's money. <laughs> they're like, partying. Damn, Look, these guys, commission. These guys got their monies. They're ready to buy some toys. Well, he took it out to buy Max something. Oh, uh, that's sweet, uh, good dude. Boy. I'm saying it's ridiculous. A uh, good boy. I wish I was lying about this because uh, they're too good to each other. Also, I and that's what scares me. They're too so far. you everything you're saying. I think uh, other than them being a little weird, uh, good kids. No, this, oh, it's uh, it's great, and the fact that they can only good function so around far. each other is healthy. Oh, good yeah. parents <laughs> yeah, so far. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally codependent again. Yeah, me the tell me the bad parenting part <laughs> here's the bad part. so oh, that's my part um they were holding like their their money and their gift card in their hand and be and before we left the table i said put that in your pocket you're gonna lose it yeah and then they both put it in their pocket or whatever so uh this is like a couple days ago when it was monsooning outside even though monsoons every day so, what's oh, it? Oh, oh, what was that? Oh my Put that God. in the dead Hey, everybody, <laughs> it's Gorilla Monsoon from the <laughs> WWF. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> <That> old man <laughs> burped on. Yeah. God, God damn it. Anyway. <laughs> my dad used to do that. He'd be like, we got to go over to my friend's house and get some <laughs> mulch that he's got. Well, that's how my dad would tell me about the stuff we had to do during the day. So uh, it starts raining. We run into the car. We drive to Target. We uh, we go to get out of Target, and uh, Max can't find his gift card. And uh, this is the whole, this is on his birthday, by the way. Um, so, and that was the whole plan. He got the gift card in the morning. And then oh, when man. daddy got home from work, we were going to yeah, um, go, shopping. go shopping for your present. You were going to buy yourself, which they were excited oh, about. Oh, man, the chat room said exactly what I know the answer is. N- yes, yeah. same. Yep, because I know what my wife would do. I would have no play in this, by the way. I will weigh in with my opinion. Yeah. But my wife would have already handled it. So our immediate thought, me and Crystal were, well, you lost your gift card. Uh, that's it. We're driving home because you, you had the responsibility of your own gift card and uh, you lost it. I do do that. That and, is my play. And then, yep. uh, and then, especially we're, we're if driving I told home. you to put it in your pocket. If I told you to put yeah. it in your pocket, but you, you saw him put him put it in his he, pocket. He did put it in his pocket. It must. Oh well. It okay, must hold have, on a second. That's different. Then no, he, he listened to me. It just must have fallen out in the either getting out or getting in the car that's because an we were running. Then. That's an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a little different. And so now he could have bur- taken it out of his pocket again. I don't pay attention to anything, but, you know. So he mm. could have actually lost it. He said he didn't. Anyway, you got to believe him. He. When he said he couldn't find his gift, he started getting like he started crying. Oh devastated. God! And then I, we just I looked at Crystal and we were like, you know, we could use this as a lesson. Right. It's his birthday though, and this is like it was an accident. Like it's raining, it could have fallen I'm out. I'm gonna say I put this on you two as parents to give a six year old a gift card to hold on to. Yeah, That's you on you. Up. That's what we yeah, said. He screwed up. And Crystal said, uh, so the, I'd let this one slide and not we, teach him the lesson. We did. We did yeah. let it slide, and we just said when we told him, like, listen. If but this as he gets older, yeah. If this was any other day than your birthday, th- then we we would have made you go home. Oh, you handled this you know. one right. But um, but today it's your birthday, and uh, you know, it's an accident. We're gonna give the you. The chat the room thinks he held onto the card and got a second card. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I hope he, if he did, yeah. I would be like, you're fine. No, if he said that, then you get him a third card for his <laughs> yeah. reward. I mean, th- I, then I'll just be like, oh, stop parenting. You already got, you already figured it out. Yeah, because that's, it, that's the way. It's weird the number of things that Andrea gets in front of that I Wait, don't Wait, which even... target did you go to? Because I'm going to go find that gift card. Yeah, Castleberry Target. Oh, believe me, we went back to the restaurant. Oh, God, um, that sucks, Which man. I was screaming at my wife. Uh, is monsooning. She gets I out. I just angle. called and been like, is, did anyone no, send me a gift she, card? steal that. She thought that if she called, oh, they God. wouldn't tell her the truth. But if you she looked at me. I'm paranoid. If she looked him in the eye. They may be like my son yeah. wants to give. That's be why like, I didn't I call the it. owl back. I just gave it to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On my birthday cards, said, everything. I'm like, just yeah, let yeah. it go to God. I said it's lost. It either fell out in the parking lot and it's washed away, or someone picked it up. You know, it's a fifty dollar Visa gift card. You know, uh, although yeah, you handled that right. That poor guy. That yeah. sucks. Anyway, you no. Know, oh, believe me, he was totally fine with it. He's like, okay. <laughs> he's like, I want this. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that devastating. That's what. That's what got me. Like, you got over it pretty quick. And yeah, uh, then I I kept telling him. 
like you know that uh, you shouldn't have lost that. You got to be more careful with your things. He's yeah, like, yeah. he's like, I understand. And then immediately like they're running, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, that's not sinking in. It hurts me. It's the hardest part of parenting. But I am the one, not Andrea. I am the one that when Maisie messes up, like if I say, "Hey, your mom just told you to stop doing cartwheels. If you do another one, you're going to bed early." I'll say things like that. I'll be like, "If you do one more, we're done here. We're going up." She'll do it. I'll go going up, going up. Go on, eh, eh, and she'll start doing. Eh, eh, I'm not going up. No, nah, I told well, you. Well, that's directly disobeying you. I told you, you the deal. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, yeah. But, but it is extremely hard. Oh, it sucks to yeah. force them to. I hate it. I hate going up, going, and I make myself do it so Andrea doesn't have to do it. I hate it, though. dude. I, hate I, it. I worse. It's so funny their personality, and I, now I'm just more hardened into the fact that they're the. That humans, I mean, maybe it's all, it maybe it's all different, but at least the ones that me and Crystal created were born with these personalities that they have. And maybe we, uh, they were formed along the way, of course, but it's like who they are, man, it's just, it's there. I am when Max was two years old, we were like, we're going to have a problem with this one. We're like yeah, this yeah. one, going to be based on Tommy and stuff. That's just yeah, like yeah. always follows this, the rules. This one's completely never. different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yet it's like, uh-oh. And then they now, look alike, but the guts are different. And now <laughs> it's 100% we're seeing Max is being defiant and we'll, like he'll say no and then we'll, have to, we'll yeah, have to ground yeah. him or like go to your room or whatever. And he's emotional where like he gets angry and then like and then like I've seen him run a little oh, hotter than Tommy. He's gonna be like a Kyle and be punching holes in the wall. <laughs> then, but then then Tommy's going and then I'm just like man it's not like it's happening yeah. the way that we thought it was and that leads me to believe it's just you're born with this baseline personality. And I know everybody's tired of hearing me say that, but man, before kids, I would have said well, I don't know. Like, you know, uh, I remember me and Ross having that uh, big argument at the time on the Friday Free Show where he's like, no, nah, I'm not born with any personality. It's 100%, uh, you know, they are oh, learned. Oh, yeah, I yeah. forgot about that show. And then yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't know, I read this book. He's like, no, no, you don't know what you're talking about, which was weird because you would think that Ross saw these personality types and his kids right like before they even had a chance to learn it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but I'm sure everybody's e- different. E- now. Even everybody's parenting and everybody's kid is different. So you could get a little bit of both. I mean, both, I think both are possible, you know, depending on the influence or well, that's what they said. Like science says it's like 50, 50 nature nurture, yeah. but man, I, I feel like it's a lot more nature in there yeah. just because of that. I'm just like, man, Tommy is who he is. And, I may can I may be able to ruin him, or he can't get ruined <laughs> as he gets you know older. But it seems like he's gonna be this way, and I'm gonna be like an old man hopefully one day, and be like, "Yep, yeah, you were always this." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like parents tell us, and it's the same cliche, like you were always this personality, yeah. and you don't. And my mom always said that, and I was always thought that that was just some dumb cliche that everybody said. But maybe there was always truth behind Turns it. Turns out, what everyone told us when we were kids is right. Yeah, pretty much. Like time flies when you get older. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking oh, yeah. of time flying, do you have any emails that yeah. we can? We should yeah. dance into a few of those before we do run out of time. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're exactly see. right, man. Like it's weird too. Some of the things that Maisie says to me, I'll be like. That is neither Andrea nor me. That is something. Where did you? What is that? Where did you get that? Well, okay. where does that come from? Well, what they say. Oh yeah, and from watching these uh, YouTube video kids uh, play, they're picking up a lot of the slang that they say, and that's where they're getting it from. And Crystal gets mad. She's like, I don't want them watching anymore. I'm yeah, like, no, is it because she can't understand the I'm slang? Like- yeah, well, uh, no, well, not on that well, because she doesn't. Of it, some of it, even like I'll, I'll hear things, I'll be like, I'm not sure I even like that or they, I support that. That's what Crystal's saying, yeah. and then I'm like, oh, dumb old lady, because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> I know I'm like, this is what I still yeah. remember saying these things to my elders and the generation above me, where they didn't understand the current culture, and then I'd just be like, uh, these, you know, there's the old, you know, yeah, there's like this Black Pink song where they're talking about like some boy doing you wrong or something, and it's got like a beat that goes like boom, 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 like that uh-huh. and it's got words that, and Maisie was singing it when it was going boom, 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 and she goes take out the garbage <laughs> and she's like shaking and everything and it's about like like getting rid of an abusive boy or something I'm oh like what the God. hell are you listening to or something I'm like what is, what is independent woman this is <laughs> happening right now I start getting lightheaded <laughs> yeah 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 all right first email all right so I just heard a story on an OG show of when you guys went to Hontoon Island packing guns and weed it reminded me of my own scumbag self on Hontoon some five years ago. My boyfriend at the time and I went to Hontoon Island and rented a cabin. We brought approximately 24 IPAs for one night and proceeded to drink them all. Oh. 
then, with adults and children at campsites very close by, proceeded to get naked and have drunken sex on a lawn chair next to the campfire. Next thing I know, we're in this crazy IPA-fueled fight over what? I don't know to this day. And then proceeded to sleep on the bare mattress of the bottom bunks in the cabin as the heavens opened up and a downpour soaked all over our stuff, including our clothes, outside the cabin. The next day, we gathered our rain-soaked belongings in 24 empty cans and proceeded to take a silent pontoon boat back to our car in shame. I just wanted to let you know you're not the only dirtbags to desecrate Hontoon Island. Keep up the good work. Wait a minute. Oh, we, we, we didn't do... desecrate the island. We went out there. We had a we... gun for safety and weed for fun. You <laughs> yeah. were out there acting like an animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. We uh, camped politely. We were high. Yeah. I kicked the mushroom. But, yeah, uh, nobody would have known we were high and nobody would have known yeah, we had guns. We were quiet. And yeah, yeah. You are. Uh, yeah, uh, you're a disgusting human being. You're out there. You're a trashy naked. animal. Yeah, you're <laughs> banging in a lawn chair. Who does no. that? That's your. Now, yeah, that's what I get all the time. I'm just like you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do. I'm nothing like, like, like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, trash like you, Tom. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> Why you quit saying that? You know, although at my old, uh, <laughs> you know, my old house, the mm-hmm. uh, the one right down the road here by Park Ave CDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one because I had a privacy fence. There was a time when the fire would get real low, where I convinced Andrea to, you know, out there by the, <laughs> oh, gym, really? out there yeah, by yeah. the gymnia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was a one and done scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only do that once. I did. Everything out. looks better by firelight. I'll tell you that. I got it in the hot tub one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You do it once. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm not gonna do it in a. That's uh, pre kids. Yeah, I'm not exactly. I'm not gonna yeah. do it in a lawn chair while all their families are there grilling hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pre uh, kids and uh, pool screen. So it was uh, gnats around. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. God. You got to keep uh, looking down and blowing. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep them. Blow, blow keep the gnats off. off. Yeah, like, what is that? <laughs> that looks like long grain rice. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> right, Uh-oh, I think they went in. All right. Uh, BDM here. I have quietly <laughs> listened to every show across the board, all except Lee's rockin' interviews, and fast-forwarded through some interviews that made me cringe That's a the funny thing about the... Okay, if we can talk about the Lee <laughs> interviews, you guys give him so much S about the Lee interviews, you never had to listen to him. You didn't have to listen to yeah, him. Yeah, they're on-demand podcasts. Yeah, it you wasn't just skip like, right past it. it the, you the, act as if we put the <laughs> interview in a shotgun and put it in your mouth and <laughs> pulled the trigger and blew it into your mind. It doesn't work like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's like the Dave Chappelle uh, this last stand up when uh, he was talking about Netflix he's like uh, if I offend anybody he's like you clicked on my face <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. that's how it works now yeah. it's 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 more than ever it used to be a uh, like a radio thing where it's like why are you listening and I kind of understand back in the 90s or whatever because it was the only thing to listen to right if you want to talk radio and that's what you liked and that's the genre you like there was the one station Maybe yeah. two, but usually one. And it's like, I understand the people that complained more back then because it was like, oh, I, the only talk radio I have and I don't want this or like you offended me, you know. But nowadays when you click and demand and you click on the things you want to listen to, then to yeah, complain. I, and I then, don't feel bad for anybody. If you didn't want to listen to him talk to some guy from Eagles of Death Metal, I don't care. Although, you didn't have to listen to it. With all that said, they're horrible. Okay? Yeah, they <laughs> are bad. So, I, and yeah, I, yeah, I, I, never I contemplated taking them off the website uh and then i thought i did i we may have taken yeah well, think, they're, they're buried now gone. i think i scraped everything off the yeah i, think I, I apologize it yeah. yeah that was the beginning and end by the way so yeah. then the bdm <laughs> asked do you think that i am in the minority i feel like it might be 50 50 maybe it was easier for me to listen because of my profession and i was listening to you guys anyway on the radio so maybe my situation was different anyways i sometimes feel like i have my own personal gestures and that's pretty nice when i'm driving around in traffic Thank you. P.S. If a job doesn't come in soon, I'm only going to get more stoned. So basically, they were saying they listened to every, like all the content. All the content, yeah. yeah. We've gotten a And there are people that can, but most don't have the time, and I get it. Yeah. Ghost does in our Twitch chat room, twitch.tv slash Tom and Live. He says he hits every single piece of content. And if you listen to every single content, unlike a lot of other shows, I'll use our buddy Dan Cummins as an example. I don't believe any of his content, the uh, of his three shows, or possibly four, th- they're all like, completely different yeah you know, they don't like, cross reference they don't cross yeah. reference no. you know scared to death is different people they're their own thing um, is we dumb is completely different time suck is just him yeah like when we do things like if you listen to act you're going to hear some references to amt you're going to hear some act some bdm some og yeah. and i li- i kind of like that because we've been especially in 2021 you and i've been looking at this as like you know what this is just one big brand and we're just trying to make you laugh yeah uh, it's just one giant show 
uh, but there's different shows in that one giant show. And there's the clean version. There's the subscription version. There's the uh, the uh, you know yeah. th- the blue version. Maybe a little bit different mood. Like BDM stuff, I think is a little more laid back. Maybe a little more behind the scenes. OG, obviously, you're going to get us at our probably our most raw beforehand. Then you'll get some show that you can either choose to listen to or not. Yeah, yeah. Then you've got Friday Free Show. It's going to be a little crazy, a little pumped up and uh, high energy. Then ACT shows are maybe a little more informative and, and edited. You know, yeah, they don't have a lot of curse words or a lot of nuances in there that are really, really bad. I think because we got to every once in a while, um, we'll get big responses with certain topics. And uh, one of them being the, the first one, like the sit and stand and then uh, the Crocs was a huge one, the whole Croc thing. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, and then and, and when we mentioned pulling back on content, we got a lot of people that reached out and were telling us not to and like, please don't pull back on the amount of content. Um, so I think the people that do listen to everything, um, although it's probably the minority, they're the most engaged listeners, obviously, and then the most vocal. So they're going to be like, no, please don't uh, pull back on content. So we hear you and we're not going to do it. That's it. Damn. <laughs> we're Man, doing, I like this confident the time course. stuff. You rattled me there. You it, got me, buddy. No, no, no. It's like uh, if you guys tell us, you tell us what to do. You're our boss. We have no boss. There's nobody above us. Nobody telling us what to do. Samantha knows that <laughs> because we don't know what <laughs> oh, we're man, doing. I don't know about you, but Jesus is my co-pilot. So we, <laughs> well, co-pilot though, not yeah, boss. Yeah. I got somebody above me at all times. So we're literally following the our listeners' lead to the fact that you tell us what you want, we'll do that. They, tell us what we you want. want. What you really, 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 really want. want. Yeah, we work for you guys. If you want, yeah. Forgive my past. Oh, it is karaoke if Thursday. Although it me, seems like everything they want is stupid. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. no. My precious time. Mm. She's singing it out. I liked Emma the best. Which baby spice? I liked Mel C. Let's uh, do another. Uh, we know. got to go. Oh, God. I don't want to go. Yeah, we can stay you know now. what? I'm staying. <laughs> All right. No, Rem- I'm going. Remember <laughs> remember when they used to do the 24-hour uh, radio broadcast? Yeah. <laughs> it was like the endurance. Why would, why would anybody do that? <laughs> what is remember it? when we used to do it for hurricanes? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, I, I think, still yeah. make fun of that. There's no, they're still going to do that, right? Because it used to be. No, a I think thing. that's done. I think. That's I, done, I right. think it. I think three years ago or so it died. Maybe I don't know. Depends on what. Jack I think was. they Jack, still do. Jack might want to do it. I think they still do that because so many people like, uh, like you know, when power like goes it. out. Uh, they listen. They turn to the friendly, radio. F- friendly voices for information. Um, I don't know what's going on, and I'm scared. You don't want to hear me. Although when uh, your power goes out, like the only thing that worked was my phone. <laughs> like you know, yeah. what I'm saying? that's and why. That's why I do 24 hour text messages to all my friends. And then instead of listening to the radio, I would just go to weather.com and there or whatever else. You know, the, yeah. the local. Well, I have weather a weather th- radio, and I just <laughs> listen to actual weather stuff. Instead <laughs> yeah. of like, where can I get water? Well, we got water. Here. Where can I get lumber? We got lumber here. Where can I get gas? We got it here because I hear that. And I'm like, oh, they got gas. Hold on, and- I'm waiting for them to say something <laughs> is relevant to me. <laughs> yeah, I wait. Anyway, oh, what, what was that new city that I hadn't heard of that you mentioned? Oh, uh, T- Tamaric or Tamaric? Uh, Tamaric. Tamaric. Oh, they got gas in Tamaric, Florida. By the time I get there, all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it on the radio. I get my car. I start out there running a gas. I roll into Tamaric. They're out of gas. Sorry, we're out of gas. And then a hurricane comes through. I'm dead. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>